gentlemen, both here at ISD and online. I hope everyone can hear me well. Miss Elisa, can you hear me over the airwaves? Sure can. Perfect. So I'm Mr. Colin, the head of the secondary here, and I am going to give a short presentation about the diploma programme and take any questions. We have online with us Ms. Cho, if you have any Vietnamese questions, and Ms. Chien Young, if you have any Korean questions. So the first thing, and this is for all of our students, I always ask, what is an ISB student? And this, for me, is really important. It's not just about developing somebody to go to university to get the best grade. It's about developing a whole person. And it's preparing them not only for their life now, it's for their life as we move forward. My background is languages. So an international education, uh, a global citizen traveling around the world is very, very important. I'm half English, half Spanish. Uh, I'm a French speaker, an Italian speaker, a little bit of German, and I shouldn't put Tiempia on there because my Tiempia is Tomto. Not good at all, not good at all. And my career, I'm sorry, Mr. Chin Young, it's still, it's on the list. It's not just there. But it is important for me. Languages for me are really important for the world that we live in at the moment because it really does get you to understand different people and different cultures. Now, the upper secondary, we split it into two programs, grade nine and 10, with the IGCSE, ending in those external qualifications, the GCSE, and then the diploma program, again, external qualifications at the end of grade 12. Both of these are external, therefore, there is no, uh, Problem between teachers is an externally valid recognized qualification and recognized throughout the world. IB, one of the big things with IB in comparison to other qualifications, it not only develops people's knowledge and content, it really develops people's skills and it develops students to think for themselves and to think for the next stage. And that is fundamental when you are going not only to university, but living in the 21st century. And these skills are actually throughout all the IB programs. We're so advantaged here with our PYP program. We are now a candidate school for the MYP middle school program, and then into the diploma program. Because the learner profile attributes and the approaches to learning are central to what people need to do. You do need to question and be caring and open-minded. You do need to not only develop your thinking skills or your communication skills, but your social skills of how you act with different people, now both online as well as in person but also things like self-management, understanding your time, organizing your time. This is something that many of us when we were at school maybe still have struggled with. So it really is important that right at the center of all the IV programs is skills and that continues, that continues in the DP. Because at university, that is what people are looking for. That's what sets an IV student away from students. Now, well before 2020 and the COVID-19 outbreak, ISV was moving different platforms online and making sure students were working online. Thanks to the likes of Google, we do use the full Google suite for different word processing, presenting tools that students can work on collaboratively, regardless of where they are. Our learning platform ManageMac is where we have all of our information to help students with setting of tasks, as well as uploading of tasks. Things like plagiarism checkers, like Turnitin. Many, many years ago, when we might have been at university, it might have been easy to take that book, 
and to write down those ideas as though they were your own. And nobody else knew. But we know that that's not right. We know that that's not going to help us. Looking at other people, other people's information is fundamental. But turning around and citing and arguing that that piece of information is right or wrong is important. So a plagiarism checker, turning around, looking at all sources and saying, excuse me, this, particular, this comes from Encyclopedia Britannica. This comes from the Wall Street Journal. It's important that students cite, tell us where that information comes from. The IB thought about online learning, I would say nearly 10 years ago, when for small schools like ISB, they brought the promoter online learning courses. Small schools like ISB that are growing could not offer every subject that the diploma has. But there may be one or two students that wants to take a course that we can't offer. So the promoter courses allow students to take courses, for example, currently we have students taking economics, psychology, subjects that we can't offer in our school, but students are learning with approved IB teachers across the world. And the most exciting thing on the promoter courses is your classmates are from all over the world. So this idea of global connections is equally important. Last year, I remember supervising some students doing Spanish. The teacher was in Israel. The group they were working with, one group, one of the students, it was a group of three, they worked together practically all year. One of the students was here in Vietnam, this our student. The other student was in China, right there. The other student, was over in the Caribbean, was over, I can't remember if it was Jamaica or Barbados. But so then to organize themselves in three different time zones, China and Vietnam was nice and easy, but they had to organize themselves if they want to do anything together. The other group, there was a student, one from ISV, one from New Zealand, and I think the other one was from, uh, again in the region, I think it was in Japan. So again, this global classroom, is important for that IB across the, you know, across all of their platforms. So the promotion platform, our students do take advantage of. But online platforms, online learning platforms were fundamental the moment that we moved online. When the school was closed due to COVID-19, from day one, the secondary continued. From day one, we continued delivering our curriculum both at GCSE, lower secondary, and IB. Our current grade 12 students have continued exactly in the same places where they were had they been in school full time. Of course, some of the challenges online, uh, some of the difficulties they experienced during that period, some students have had a little bit more difficulty than they may have had. But due to our online platforms, we were able to continue from day one working online. And the presentation today, we use Zoom and we're ready to, we're connecting with people uh, here in the city, but actually Miss Elisa, uh, unfortunately, is out of country. I will come back just at the end to talk to a little bit about management, because as parents, you do have access. And we have a little video that we will send back to you, uh, which shows you how to show see management. But there are a few things that you can look at what your sons and daughters are doing. Okay. This is where I want to spend just a little bit of time because this is the difference between an IB diploma and other subjects. And it is the program itself. In the center, we have the attributes of the learning profile, which we said that's fundamental being caring, being risk-taking, being open-minded, being a thinker, an inquirer. These are all right at the center for all of us. Some things we're great at, some things we know we have to work a little bit more on, but we know that as people, it's important. Then the approaches to learning, thinking skills, communication skills, self-management skills, research skills, again, regardless of what your program is, the IP say these are fundamental, across all the programs. 
But then we move into the areas that are most important for us in the diploma. The core of the theory of knowledge, extended essay, and CAS. And I'll talk a little bit more about those in a second. These three elements are what make an IB student different from any other high school student. And then we have the six subject rules. Again, when you're 16 to 18 looking to go to university, we're not looking for you to specialise in everything at 16 years old. It's important that you continue with a general education of which three of those areas, three of those subjects will be at higher level, therefore more depth, and three at standard level. So it takes you further than you would do in the end of grade 10. A theory of knowledge. I don't know for yourselves sometimes if you really understand what we mean by theory of knowledge. Because for the students, it's a real journey, it's a real process. Because we say it's critical thinking, we say it's about knowledge. But it's how you look at something. So look at this. Does this look familiar? A map of the world? I grew up in Europe. I did my primary education in Spain. I did my second education in the UK. In Spain, when you're in primary school, you have to learn all the countries and where they are in the world. So, you know, you have to sit and you have to learn. So this map for me is really important. And this is exactly the type of map that I had in my school textbook. But talking to some other people, it looks a bit different. So when I talk to Miss Elisa, who's from the US, California, she turns around and tells me that this is the map that she sees of the world. But I don't agree with her. The map that I have, that is the world map. I know, because my teachers told me, because it's in my textbook. But Miss Elisa turns around and shows me her textbook, and she shows me that. Next, she'll be telling me the world is flat. But then, I was speaking to a friend of mine here in Vietnam, and suddenly they tell me that this is the world map. Is my teacher wrong? Is Miss Elisa's teacher wrong? Or is the Vietnamese geography teacher wrong? Of course, nobody's wrong. We know that maps are made, usually with a particular focus, for Europeans. They will put Europe in the centre. The Americans will put America in the centre. And a lot of Asian countries will put the Pacific Ring or Asia in the centre. But we know the world is round. We know that it doesn't matter where we take that shot, it is the same piece of information. But do students know to question when we look at something? Is it the same piece of information? And why people may look at it differently? And they need to turn around and question what they're doing, not only in their subjects, but in general. And that's what, that's what theory of knowledge is about. It's getting you just to turn around and stop and look at why things are different and why the world is not flat anymore. Because if you look at those three simple maps, each of us takes it in a different way. When I close my eyes, Europe is in the center. But I appreciate when I talk to Miss Elisa or talk to somebody from Asia, Different. So theory of knowledge is about questioning why things are the way they are in everything that you do, especially your IB subjects, and maybe why you look at something differently from someone else. And in that, the course they're looking at, they're looking across the board, looking at different areas. So how do we approach knowledge through the arts or through history or through the human natural sciences and maths? What relationship does language, technology, religion, politics have on how we work things? So it's really important. The next generation, your sons and daughters are the ones that are making the decision for us when we're old and we're not working anymore. 
Theory of knowledge gets them to question, hopefully question well, the decisions they make. The IB continue with what's important. And academic success is fundamental. But what also is equally as important is developing as a person, is developing your rounded person. The IB say you must pass, you must complete the creativity, activity and service programme. You must continue to develop yourself creatively. Each student decides their path. We as a school will support, will guide, but we don't make the decisions. If you want to do something, then you follow that path. The same with the activity. Work, rest, and play. And it's important keeping up with physical activity. And then giving something back service. Of course, we are privileged. We are privileged and we should give something back. Not only to ourselves, to our local community, our national community, our global community. How you as a student want to give back is up to you. But you need to know that we do share, we do give back. So service is probably of those three the most important. And hopefully the most rewarding as well. And just here's some of the activities we've got. We've got students, our music students from uh, last year that created a band. We've got students continuing with the sports teams. And continuing again this year, our grade 11s are putting together activities with the Mid Autumn Festival to work with our younger elementary students. This is coming from them. I was in a meeting with Miss Patricia, our head of elementary today. I'm ashamed as a teacher when I've seen the ideas and the detail that they're coming up with. 16, 17 year old students. Some of them had participated as volunteers with last year's group. They've seen that. They've moved with ideas that work for them. So I can't wait for Mid Autumn Festival this year because again, our grade 11 cast students really are giving back to our local community, the younger part of the school. And then the extended essay. Investigation at university. We all started either upper high school maybe, or university, and you were told, okay, I would like to go and do an essay, 2,000, 4,000 words for next week. There's the library, bye bye. And you go, what, what do I do? The extended essay, is a 4,000 word piece of independent investigation that students, when they first look out, never write 4,000 words. Most of them have cut when they're finished, when they're doing their draft, most of them have got well over 4,000 and it's then trimming, it's then cutting, trying to get the words down. But we guide them over the two years, and we do a lot of this in grade 11, we've just started now looking at research and note taking. But we get them stage by stage, looking at how to do a topic that interests you. So we've had many, many different students doing many, many different topics. In all different disciplines, each one of them has done something that is unique to them, completely unique to something that they're interested in. And our grade 11s at the moment, we're just talking a bit about research. We're just talking a bit about them understanding how you take notes when you read an article. Things that they tell me they know how to do. I've just been with your son and daughters now. And it's very, it's very interesting to see once we talk about different styles of note taking, how hmm, maybe when they've been taking notes in the past, it's not been the best way for them and this is brilliant because that's the start of a process where note taking is going to become more and more important. So the extended essay, that independent research investigation, is really setting them up for the next stage. And also it's something that's passionate to you. It's something that you have gone away and research that you wanted to do. And that's the type of thing that will lead them on to areas at university or even other areas in their life. So that's the core. And how do we assess the diploma program? Well, it's external. It's not marked by the teacher. The external exams, which take place in 
grades 12 over the month of May, end of April, month of May. These exams are set by the IB. They are sent into school, sealed envelopes. On the day of the exam, the moment of the exam, I open up the paper and I don't know who cries first, myself or the students. I don't teach most of the subjects, so it's good. But I don't know what's on the exam. I teach the syllabus, I teach the specification. But the exam that your sons and daughters sit here in Hanoi is the same exam with the same level as the student that is in China, who's over in Hong Kong. That result is equally as valid wherever it is. It doesn't matter if they say, oh, but you went to a very good school. Actually, the examiner will never know because the exam is sent now across the airwaves and you don't know who the name of it is. You don't know the country they've come from. It's valid, it's reliable, it's external. So 70% is made up from The 30% of the internal assessment, because not everything should be based on an exam. In science, you cannot do science unless you've done practical investigation. You cannot do a language, literature, if you don't have a conversation to discuss the literature topic. If you're doing a foreign language, you can't be assessed unless you speak. So all of these areas, every subject requires 20 to 30% of internal assessment. That, again, is usually projects driven by the student, assessed by the teacher, but moderated by the IB. So again, we don't turn around and say, okay, yes, your comments were okay with those. Because what happens if a teacher really likes the students and that year was just a little bit generous, or worse, a little bit harsh, or a new teacher's come in? And that happens in schools all the time. So the IB will take a sample of our work and they will moderate it to make sure that the, the quality as well as the marking is fair for everybody. So it's important, and that internal assessment takes place over the two years. A lot of it takes place towards the end of grade 11 and grade 12. But we, we make sure that we take it across the whole of the course. Now, I will be sending you a nice booklet from IB which talks all about the diploma in a lot of detail. But something that, again, makes the IB a favourite with universities is the fact that it's rigorous in many different ways to ensure that the students that get awarded the diploma really have got a good base. And in that, the number one requirement has nothing to do with the subject you're doing. The number one requirement is that you must pass, you must meet the CAS requirements. So you must do that creativity, activity, and service. That's the first thing that they tell you. Not what your grade is in maths, or what your grade is in history. That's the number one requirement. In that, they say that out of the number of points that you have, which is 42 points for the subjects, so every subject is graded out of seven. Plus we have three points for the theory of knowledge and the extended essay. So total 45. They're saying 24 points is the minimum that you can get. If you get less than that, we can't give you the diploma. Not getting an N, as in not passing the theory of knowledge or the extended essay. So you need to pass both of those. So again, it doesn't matter if I pass my CATS, if I've got 42.7s in all my subjects. Because at the center of the IB, we said with these common elements of theory of knowledge, creativity, activity, and service, and extended essay. So a student has to pass those. And then the fact of not getting a one in the subject, we said they went from seven to one. Seven being the top grade, one being the, the lowest grade. They say if you get to one in one subject, it's about having a balance. No, if you get a one, it doesn't matter if you've got 41 points. No, that doesn't work, does it? What would it be? 42 minus 7, let's say 34 points. 34 points, it says if you get a one, sorry, you won't get the diploma. If you get two twos, anything more than that, no diploma. 
and let's move on. No more than three threes. If you, what you're seeing is you need to be getting, you would say, above half marks in the different subjects. So not perfect scores, but above the half marks. The same with the three, the three high level subjects, you need to get four, you need to get 12 points, you need to get above four. The standard level subjects, you need to get above threes. So can you see, you have to keep everything balanced. And that's the most important thing in what universities love. Because if you pass and continue down, if you pass all of these, wow, you really are good at time management. And if you've managed to make it through, probably quite good with stress as well. So it really is, it's a difficult two years. But once these students go to university, in comparison to others, I don't know, it's not everybody, in comparison to a lot of students that have done very, very specific courses, then they've done, they've had to balance so much more that it just set them up well for the next stage. Now, continuing to ensure that our students, again through CAS, develop as people, we do have our extracurricular activities program here in school. And actually, grade 11s and grade 12s lead and have started to lead more activities and suggest activities. In our dance studio, just through there, we've got a grade 11 boy who is doing dance with PYP students and street dance. Not one of the PE department, excellent PE department we've got, feels that they're really into the street dance. I think it's one of our most popular activities at the moment. This was led by a student. This is a student that says, no, I really want to do this with you. The university counselling, Mr. Lisa is going to talk a little bit more about that because not only are we supporting you as well as your sons and daughters through the diploma programme, we're supporting you in preparation for that next stage as well because it is a family process. It very much is a family process, driven obviously by your sons and daughters. And then we work with uh, all the simulations and organisations, the modern United Nations, really been really successful in our school as well as TEDx, as well as the TEDx talks, which you've probably seen a lot online. We have students that stand up and give heartfelt presentations on many, many different subjects. And I want to kind of end my little bit with something that's really important. They're not doing it on their own. They're not doing the subjects on their own. They're not doing their diploma on their own. And also, you're not on your own. We are a small school. Yes, we've grown. Yes, we are growing. But we are a small school. We're a family-owned school, and that family-owned support is still there. We are trying to make your sons and daughters more independent. But they do have people that they can go and speak to. If it's subject issues, they can speak to the class teacher. They can make an appointment to have a lunchtime chat, an after school chat, a before school chat, maybe a free period chat. You, if you have a specific subject question, can email the teacher and maybe have a quick conversation about it, not having to wait till the parent teacher conference. Maybe they're having issues with studying or their time management or their deadlines, or the homeroom teacher for their well being and for that is there. University counsellor is there. I am there as well as yourselves, to support them in these. So it's important that the students, as well as yourselves, remember that, yes, we're trying to make them independent, but there is a support network there for them. And just a reminder of the subjects that we've got happening. Again, a small school, but already, in the combination we've got to students taking, we've got students doing English language and literature, or English bit. So two types of English. In our language section, we've got Vietnamese, Korean, and French. We've got Spanish beginners on for the first time. We've got the sciences, we've got the humanities, and we've got the maths as well, as well as the arts. So it really, it might be a small school, but it's got a big program. And that sends students all over the world to different, many, many, many different disciplines. You can get your engineering through that. You can get your sciences through that. 
you can get your lawyers through that, you can get your arts, your liberal arts. That is a standard offer that allows students to move forward. And as I said, one or two students would say things like psychology, economics as well, complementing that. And I think this is the most important slogan that actually our class of 2020 started to coin. And it is that our students are without borders. It is that the 21st century are your sons and daughters. They're the citizens of the 21st century. And our job here is, if we can, just to try and help them. Thank you. So any questions? Any specific questions about the diploma programme at the moment? Yes. I wouldn't. I, I think we might just be still in time for the day because it started at the start of the month. So uh, when we have coffee, if we have a quick chat and we can just I'll check what your child is doing on their program to see what that combination may be as well. So because we do have one or two, and I can give you a little bit more information. Admissions, as well as when I've sent information out from last year, we've given information about the promotion. But I'm happy to talk to you one-on-one -on -one to have a look at that with you. Uh, Miss Cho, Miss Jin Young, do we have any questions from participants there? Okay, so what we're going to do here in the room is have a quick five minute break. Miss Elisa, I think you're recording this so you can stop recording. We'll get a cup of tea up at the back and in a few minutes time we will have our second session which is about university counselling.